us out. Let's make our confession of faith together. It's there on your screens. This is my Bible. It is the living word of God. It gives me abundant life. I am not just a hearer of the word. I'm a doer of the word. This word teaches me that I am more than a conqueror. My spirit and my mind are prepared to receive and apply the message that I'm about to receive. Remain standing if you will. Go to Acts chapter 28. Acts chapter 28. We were in a series of teachings on the weekend, and we hit a few Wednesdays or maybe one Wednesday uh, with it in the series called Epic. Everybody say Epic. Epic. We're talking about how to uh, uh, take small things and apply them because they'll make a what kind of difference? Big difference. Please understand, big doors swing on what kind of hinges? small ones, which means sometimes you think you got to make these major drastic changes and reality is, is you just need to make a small change and it'll have a big difference. Somebody say small things, big difference. Acts chapter 28, verse number one. This is the same place we were in on part number one, but we're going to go another further tonight. Acts 28 and one. Now to give you the context, the apostle Paul, now, now, now look at me, Harvest, he'd been through hell. Uh, uh, somebody say a lot. A lot. <laughs> He he been through he he's been through a lot. He he's been lied on. He's been betrayed. He's been left for dead. He's been eulogized. He's been shipwrecked. He's had folk talk about him. He's had folk steal from him. He's had folk that he did a lot for act ungrateful. He he, he had a lot. I don't know about you. You you've been through a lot. He anybody in here been through some stuff? Is that you? It's all right. Look at your name and say I look good today. Tell him, but you don't know what it took to get here. See, see, man, you may know something about, uh, you may see my, uh, 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 my glory, but you don't have any clue about my story. Because if you knew what it took just to be me, there's people that don't know just to do the stuff that you do. It took everything in you to not throw in the towel and to not give up and to keep believing that it was going to get better. And so Paul is in this place. Are y'all here? Paul is in this place. And now Paul, uh, he, he, he's, he's been shipwrecked. Say shipwrecked. Now, they get onto this island called Malta. Everybody say Malta. And when they get there, now we are at the place where Paul has been through a lot. Everybody say it again. Say a lot. lot. And here we are, verse 1. Now, when they escaped, they found out that the island was called Malta. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled a fire and made us all a welcome because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and had laid them on the fire. So look at me, Harvest. There's a fire. Somebody say a fire. Fire. uh, Paul is trying to fuel the fire. Now, let's take this out of a natural context and put it into a spiritual context. Paul is simply trying to keep his passion going. Paul is just trying to be better today than he was yesterday. Yeah, now, is there anybody where you've been through some stuff and, and, and folk are fighting you and you're like, man, I'm just trying to keep my passion going. You ever have folk have an attitude with you? You're like, what is your problem with me? I ain't done nothing to no- nobody in here. You ever walk- folk, look, well, you walk in the room and you can feel attitude and you think, what in the world is the problem? Paul's just trying to be passionate about his life. And I think there's some people that Wednesday night life. They say, I'm just trying to be passionate about my life. Paul said, I'm just trying to kindle the fire. Watch watch this. Uh, He gathered some six. He laid them on the fire. And as he's trying to kindle the fire in his life, he's trying to make sure he's faithful to church attendance. He's making sure he's giving again. He's he's making sure he's praying. He's commanding his day. Didn't even know what a command your day was till it came to harvest. Didn't even know how to pray till it came. He said, I'm just trying to get my passion going. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here comes somebody. A viper came out because of the heat. So watch this. The snake was attracted to his passion. You, you want to know what makes you a threat? It's that you're passionate when other people have lost passion. You want to know what makes you a threat when everybody else is quitting? You're saying, but we can go further. You know what makes you a threat when everybody else is saying, we can't. You're the only one sitting up here saying, we can. And if God be for us, then who can be a So watch this, the verse, the verse, he says, the viper came out because of the heat, because of the fire, because of the passion, and it fastened on his hand, which means that joker bit him and said, I'm taking you out with this bite. Now, here's what you need to know. A viper could have bit him and did what's called a dry bite, which means he couldn't have released venom, which suggests that if a snake bites and releases venom, he only does it because he intended to kill. And I just think there's a few of y'all tonight. 
that some stuff has come at you in the last few months that when you look at it, it wasn't just intended to make you sad, mad, or angry. But if you really look at it, it was trying to take you up out of here. But you ought to let devil and everybody else know you threw your best shot and I'm stuck. And you're not just surviving, but you're thriving. Somebody shout, I'm thriving. <laughs> so the natives, verse 4, saw the creature hanging from his hand. Then they said to one another, no doubt this man is a murderer. Whom though he escaped the sea, justice doesn't allow him to live. In other words, they were saying because, watch this, because something bad has happened to him, he must have done something wrong. Yeah, I'm going to say again. They, they were saying because something negative, something, something unfortunate has happened to this man. He must have done something wrong, and so justice is finally catching up to him. That's what the natives said. But look at verse 5. But he shook. Notice the Bible don't even call it a viper no more. It calls it a creature, which means while it was on his hand, it metamorphosized. It started out as somebody just saying something negative, but what you didn't know is that they had actually been trying to get your job, so there was another plot. It started out as one thing, but it metamorphosized into something. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Let me talk over here because they ain't saying that over here. He, he shook off the creature. Somebody shout the creature. I said shout it, not say it loud. But he shook off the creature into the fire. <laughs> watch this. He, he, watch this. The creature was attracted to his passion, to his fire. So Paul says, I'm going to use my passion. I'm gonna, watch this. Let me, let me just go because somebody said, this is what my passion about. Uh, uh, maybe it's your praise. And have you ever noticed when you start going through stuff, all of a sudden now, that, come on, lift your hands. T tonight, I need to shift somebody from right here to right here. Yeah, notice how when you're going through something, uh, come on, you ought to shout this. Amen, amen, amen. I don't feel like shouting. Look at it. He shook it off. Look at the verse. He shook it off. Put that verse up. He shook it, the creature off. Shook it, the creature off. But he shook the <laughs> But he shook off the creature. T touch your neighbor and say, you're going to shake it off tonight. See, if you want it to be messed up and ratchet and jacked up, you came to the wrong church tonight. But if you came in here to get that viper up off of you, I said, somebody in here, that viper's getting ready to come up off of you. But he shook off the creature into the fire and he suffered what? No harm. Which means, watch this, it bit. It released its toxin. It released its venom. And it injected its fangs. But after Paul finished getting passionate again, the Bible says, wasn't no damage from the fangs, wasn't no damage from the venom. Look at verse 6. <laughs> But, but watch this. They said, well, he's just doing that because it's Wednesday night and he's at church. He, he, he's just doing that because it's Sunday here at church. He at church. Uh, well, they, they were expecting he was going to swell up and die. <laughs> just, just like some, some enemies that have come against you were hoping it was going to take you out. They were hoping you were going to quit tithing. They were hoping you were going to quit being faithful. They were hoping you were going to stop serving God. They were hoping you were going to even stop believing in God at all. But they looked after a long time and saw no car, uh, harm come to him. Look at this last part. So then they changed their mind. And they said, he must be a God. Mm. Father, I decrease that you might increase. Move now in this place. We ask that you would speak to us clearly tonight, that we would move and walk in what you've ordained. Father, we thank you now for your presence. We thank you now for your spirit. Father, we are standing next to miracles. We are standing next to people that have been bitten, but they're not beaten. We are standing next to somebody that the statistics have already written off, but God. We are standing next to somebody where the doctor has already written them off, but God. We are, we are standing next to somebody that it doesn't even make any sense how they're still standing, but God. And so tonight, before we even jump into this word, God, we're going to start that fire that Paul started. And we're going to release some passion in this atmosphere. Because every toxin that was still in us, we declare tonight 
that is going to be released up out of our system. Every venom that was introduced, we declare that tonight it's going to be released out of our system. And if you believe it, I need you to give them 20 seconds of fire. Come on, give them 20 seconds of fire, of passion. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. As you take your seats, high five two or three people next to you and tell them, I'm recovering from a snake bite. I'm recovering from a snake bite. Hallelujah. Watch this now. I, I want to do some review, and then I want to walk us into this. If you were not here for part one, you need to get part one. Uh, I want to walk us into this. Uh, in this series of teachings, we've been talking about being epic. Everybody say epic. That means to be heroic, grand in scale and character, to be impressive, and to be remarkable. I need you to get this, and I say this as often as I can because many Christians don't understand the totality uh, or, or the grandeur of it. Please understand, God has created you to be epic. Say epic. Nothing that God ever did did he do to make it to be average, to make it to just be regular, to make it to be like everything else. God created your life to be epic. Say epic. Now, please understand, what you need to understand about being epic is that what makes the great stories the best is when you look at where the great stories had to go through and come from. You don't appreciate being on the top unless you've been at the bottom. You don't appreciate friends unless you never had them. You don't appreciate love unless you've never had it. You don't appreciate being appreciated unless you've never been appreciated. You don't appreciate having unless you've never had. You don't appreciate a mountain unless you've had a valley. So please understand, please understand, your life being epic does not mean that it's always great all the time. It means that sometimes you're going to be up here, and it means sometimes you're going to feel like you're down here. But here's what's good about it is that even if you're up there or down here, if Jesus is with you down here, it's it's still better than you being up here without him. Just your neighbor say, he is with me. Now watch this. To be epic, we must apply small things or principles that make a big difference. And through this series, and we talked about several different things uh, in this series that I won't re uh, go over, but I encourage you to get all the teachings in this series. Please understand, you are where you are because of whoever has your ear. So please understand, the reason I tell you so often to get the CDs, uh, I, I got so many great reports from this weekend that said, Bishop, somebody went there and bought the whole series and this and that. Please, please understand, you need to get the CDs because, please understand, whatever you're rep repeating is what you're going to begin playing out. It's what you're going to begin seeing in your life. And so as long as you sit up listen to music that matches your mood. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? So when you, when you feel depressed, you got on all this depressed music, talk about my baby that left me. Well, then good. And I got news for you. That wasn't your baby if they left. Because if they were yours, they couldn't have walked out. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying? Now, now watch this. Watch this. Uh, 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 whatever you're listening to, that is what's going to begin to uh, be reflected, and you're going to begin to walk out in your life. And so in all of that, please understand, I encourage you to get all the CDs in this series because you've got to repeat it over and over and over again. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Now, faith there is not limited to faith that produces good results. It could be faith that produces negative results. Watch it. If you heard all your life you were stupid, you know what you believe about yourself today? You're stupid. And you can come into church and say, no, I just, I am who God says I am. But then you go home and act like what you were told because that's what you believe. It's quiet in here. If somebody already told, always told you you were ugly and then all this kind of thing, you can say, oh, I'm just, I'm just a diva for Jesus. But uh, in the back of your mind, you're sitting there thinking, well, but it must not be good enough because if it was good enough, why did so-and-so not think it was good enough? Not understanding everybody don't know how to recognize value. You didn't hear what I just said. Everybody don't know how to recognize value, which means, please understand, there are certain people that, please understand, uh, you can have on a very uh, expensive piece of clothing, but only certain people that have uh, the taste, watch this, and that have the pedigree to understand that what you're wearing is a value, but even know that it's something, because to somebody, Louis is really Louis. Now, I'm not saying that to be materialistic. I'm just saying that everybody can't recognize value. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, did you hear what I just said? All right, all right, all right, all right. So, so, so whatever you're listening to repeatedly, that's what you're going to believe, which is why you have to get the CDs, and from sunup to sundown, I encourage you, that's what you should have playing, because your faith is growing, and your faith is either growing in Jesus, or your faith is growing in all the jacked up stuff you've been told. But it's growing either way. Make sense? All right, now, the things from which we are bitten are small, but if you don't know how to recover, it could make a big difference. Matter of fact, your neighbor looks real spiritual, but truth be told, the reason I need to come back around and swing at this again is because we started the process of getting some of the venom out, but there's still some in there. 
and they Monday, Tuesday, and so far in the day revealed to them that there's still some in there. Okay, only five of y'all going to be honest? Now, now, now watch this. Watch, watch this. Watch, watch this. Now, the Apostle Paul teaches us that natural occurrences can often illustrate spiritual principles. So, uh, in this, uh, we've observed a natural snake bite to see spiritual principles. Say natural, natural shows the spiritual. Now, here's the reality. Everything begins in the spirit, manifests in the natural. But for you and I, since we see in the natural first, we see it in the natural so that it paints a spiritual picture. So, in other words, we see second to show us what was there first. Did you hear what I just said? Now, watch this. Please understand. A snake bite, and, and I gave you the definition of that, so we're on the same page, is a circumstance or situation that introduces a toxin into your life. Now, that circumstance or situation can come at the hands of a person. It can come at the hands of, of several things. We're going to look at those again in just a moment. I'm going to review it, then I'm going to take it another further. Now, anybody ever had a snake bite? Okay, seven of us? Okay, I'm going to ask again. Maybe they can't hear me. Has anybody in ever here, based on the definition I just gave you for the spiritual application of the principle, ever had a snake bite? Thank you. Amen. I mean, oh, I've never been bitten by a snake. Then we need to talk because you the snake. That's why you ain't been bitten by one. You the one biting. So let us, we all need to see you up after church. We've been, we've been waiting to find you. <laughs> we see you. All right, all right, watch this. Now, I told you this, that number one, the first point I gave you for my note takers, and I encourage you to be a note taker. The reason I encourage you to take notes and to get the CD is because the notes, you're going to write what you heard, not what I said. With the CD, you get to hear what I actually said. All right, that's very important because uh, please understand, the root of every problem is bad communication. So if you don't receive, you say, if you go to church and say, I didn't get nothing out of it. It's just because it's not, I'm not shooting blanks. You're just not fertile. I know that was kind of, you know, kind of, but, you know, whatever. It's Wednesday Night Live. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Please understand. Uh, the word the scripture says brings life. Say life. All right. So then if we use that same example, please understand. There ain't no blanks being shot from up here. So if you're not receiving and it's not producing something, it's because there's no eggs. And I know the fellas are like, but man, I got no eggs. I know, but just flow with the analogy, okay? Just flow with where I'm going. All right. All right. All right. Touch your neighbor. Say, I'm receiving life tonight. Touch the other one. That was the wrong name. I'm receiving life tonight. Now, bites can come from different sources. Now, I gave you, I gave you four different sources, and I want to spend a little bit more time on them because in part one, I didn't have time to do that. But the first uh, uh, that it can come from, and we alliterated, they were all Fs, can come from friends. Now, friend just means somebody you trusted. Anybody ever been bitten by a friend? All right. How did that make you feel? Come on, this one's in our lives, so you know we can get extra real tonight. You know, Sunday, you know, yeah. How did it make you feel? Bad. Baffle, bamboozle, hurt, hoodwink. <laughs> All right. Now, here's what happened. You probably were hurt first and then got mad. And I don't just mean mad. I mean full of rage. Come on, be honest tonight. I can't get the venom out of you if you won't be honest with what entered you in the first place. You probably got into rage. Somebody said, no, Bishop, I didn't get into rage. Well, there's a thing called silent rage. See, some people are rageful and they can see it. Man, I'm so mad. I'm mad, man. That's one way. Then other people have that, you know, that silent rage. Like they're doing a dance, like. And then watch this. You know it's real deep rage if it's somebody you never expect to cry and then a tear. Okay, because here's the deal. You expect your enemies to do you wrong. You don't expect someone you trust to do you wrong. Hence the difference between an enemy doing what an enemy does and betrayal. Okay, the Pharisees and Sadducees, they were Jesus' enemies. They didn't betray him. Judas was somebody Jesus trusted, so that was betrayal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? All right. The second place it can come from, it can be fortuitous. Fortuitous it just means some from someone or someone you did, someone or somewhere you did not expect. Now this is unique in the sense that, uh, let me give you some good practical examples. You don't expect, uh, not here, Amen. I declare it in Jesus' name. But you don't expect church folk to bite you. 
Ooh, but I've been doing this for the 17 plus years. And ooh, my bikes. My bikes came, the same people that wrote, to, 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 came and, and bit. And the same people, ooh, Bishop, ooh, the Lord, ooh, 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 and bit. So when it's fortuitous, it's from someone or someone, uh, someone or somewhere you didn't expect. So a bike doesn't just have to come from a person. A bike can come from a place. Does this make sense? Okay. This is why certain places, when you drive by, you speed by. Because the place re re reminds you of a bike. You, anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. And so you're like, I can't believe that. And so you're, not, you're taking alternate routes. <laughs> You're trying to get from here to the tech center. You go all the way up to Thornton to go around to come back. We're like, what in the world? <laughs> all right. So, so bites can be fortuitous. They can come from someone or somewhere you did not expect. And the thing about those bites is that those bites can often catch you off guard, as do the bites that catch you off guard with friends. You just didn't expect that to happen. But if, but if I can pause for the cause and just teach you for a moment, and, and we'll move a little faster in a moment and I want to make sure we get the meat of this, is that oftentimes we say we were, we were surprised by things, but the truth be told, we just never paid attention to the fangs in the first place. So oftentimes we're going to say, you know, I'm just shocked so-and-so did that to me. Really? Okay, but your whole friendship was based off of talking about other people. So now that it turned on you, you just thought those fangs couldn't be used on you. It's quiet up in here. Y'all, where the video? Because <laughs> they ain't saying nothing. Okay, so, so, so oftentimes we can say, I, I can't believe so-and-so would walk out on me. They walked out on their mama. They walked out on their cousin. They walked out on this. They don't even stay faithful to themselves. They make commitments to themselves they won't keep. So what makes you think that you are going to make them do what they won't do for themselves? It's quiet in here. Just like sometimes, you know, women in church, you know, I, you know women in church sometimes, women with, with husbands that, you know, sometimes, you know, just different things happen. And I'm going to try to clean it up as nice as I can. But if y'all look at me with them faces, I'll just throw names, pictures, and faces up on the screen. I ain't never scared. Uh, so, but, but, you know, it's like women, you know, it's like, okay, watch this, ladies. If a man won't submit to another man, th then watch this, th then the issue you're going to have is he has no accountability as it relates to you. And so if his pastor can't get him in order, let me tell you something. Your sexual healing ain't that good to get him in order. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Well, well I'm just going to put some good loving on him and he'll change for that night. But as soon as he get up over that feeling, y'all, okay, y'all ain't going to, see, they're not talking. If they would talk, I wouldn't push. They're not talking. Listen, no, my wife, she just, you know, she just don't understand. If she won't submit to, what's this? There is a penalty for rebelling against God and God's church. New Testament. Ananias and Sapphira lied to the men of God and God killed them for it. This is Wednesday Night Live, so I, I, gotta, I can't put a lot of sugar in someone, okay? All right, all right, gotta just give it to you raw. Okay? God killed them for that. There's a penalty. There's no penalty for a husband dishonoring his wife. And there's no penalty for a wife dishonoring her husband. Outside of God says that he won't honor the husband's prayers. And the, you know, essentially, you know, a wife rebelling is going to create all kinds of issues. But there's, God says, I'm, um, you picked it. No, no it's, it's got real quiet right here. Bishop, what are you trying to say? Be because, because at the end of the day, sometimes people get shocked when they, when, when they get bit. But what they don't understand is, is you just ignored the fangs. That's the point I'm trying to make. So just let's skip past all that. That's the point I'm trying to make. So, so, so you have to sometimes consider if, if the genesis of your relationship was him being unfaithful to her. I just don't know what makes you think you're better than her. Except you knew credit. That's what you are. I'm a little raw. I just got back from the South, and I was, I was with some. <laughs> you know, they like it raw down there, and so I, you know. They don't want to hear no Hebrew and Greek. They're like. <laughs> I said ratchet, and the whole church just went, Say it, Mr. <laughs> About 
told that church up. All right. All right, so sometimes we say we didn't expect it, but we, the truth is we just ignored it because we thought it wouldn't apply to us. And I use relationships just as an example. It, fortuitous just means from someone or someone we didn't expect. Uh, the third place it can come from was, I told you, family. Someone common with you. All right? Now, if you study your Bible, you'll discover that many of the bites that came to people came through family. Joseph was bitten by his family. Esau was bitten by his family. Jacob was bitten by his family. Abraham was bitten by his family. You study over and over again, a lot of bites can come from family. And here's why. They know how to bite you where it takes longer to recover. Because oftentimes, they, kn they, they know the stuff that, that, that you, you got that. Okay, just a last one. Now, do you have like, you know, anybody ticklish in the room? Ticklish people? Okay. Two people? Okay. Oh, you won't tell. Okay, that's what it is. I ain't going to come down there and tick you like, come here. <laughs> like, tickle me, Bishop. <laughs> no, 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 not happening, not happening. All right, so not happening. So here's the thing. So <laughs> I'm just giving you a time. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. If, if you're ticklish, you, you have places where if you're tickled, you just cannot stop laughing. And it might be, you know, under your arm. Some of you, Okay. Anybody have children that are ticklish? Oh, okay, great. All right. And so if you get them in that, you know, where they're under their arm or maybe it's over here or something like that, they can't stop laughing. So what happens is, is when you deal with these bites, when you deal with these bites that come from family, is that often they know where to bite where you can't stop bleeding. Because behind the person that bit is a spirit. And the spirit, watch this, is designed to perpetuate the generational curses in your bloodline. So when it comes to bite, it says, let me, it worked on her mom when I bit there. And she's been messed up ever since. It worked on his father when I bit there. He's been messed up ever since. So if I can bite her or him there, I figure if I got the generation before them and the generation before them, I can get them. But what that snake did not know is that you have a different assignment on your life. You are the curse breaker, you are the history maker, and whatever bite took out the generations before you will not work on you. Somebody shout, it won't work. Let me see, watch this. He, he knew, he knew where to bite. So if I got, watch this. So you see it with, with David. David dealt with rejection issues. His father didn't think he was good enough to bring him in the house when the man of God came to anoint the new king. So from that day forward, uh, you can clearly see rejection because when the man of God came, I've talked to you this a million times, but just for those that haven't heard it, when the man of God came, it was a big deal. Everybody say big deal. I mean, he came with his entire entourage. He had all the associate prophets, the whole nine. I mean, it was a big, big deal. He had his big deal, had his whole entourage with him, and he came, and so he said, I'm here, and there's a king in this house. And Jesse's like, well, here are my sons. Here are all my sons right here. And he goes through them, and, and the man of God's like, not him, not him, not him, not him, not him, not him. There's no other sons here because I, the Lord told me the king's here. Oh, well, David's out there, but it couldn't possibly be David. <laughs> you, you, you know how, 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 how th there's that unspoken reality sometimes? Uh, no, no, not David. Mm -mm. Not David. And so, and so essentially, as an afterthought, he's like, but you can see him if you want to. He tells one of the brothers, go get David. Come da tell David to come here. I don't even know why he asked him to do this. It's one of y'all. He just ain't hearing from God, right? It's one of y'all. He comes back in. David comes in. David smells like sheep. He's been out there, and, he, and he's been dealing with sheep, and he smells like sheep. He stinks. He didn't have a chance to shower. He didn't have a chance to freshen up. There was no Febreze in those days, and so he just had to come in. And the man of God, watch this. Go ahead and put that verse up. Excellent job, guys. He says, he said, verse 11, he, he says, uh, uh, so Cinnamon brought him in. Now he was ruddy. Uh, and Cinnamon said, Jesse, all the, all the young men here. Look what he says. There remains the youngest. And there he is. He's over there keeping the sheep. So Samuel says to Jesse, bring him in. I'm not sitting down until he comes in. And then the story goes on from there that David's the one and the Lord anoints David. The man of God rather anoints David in front of all his brothers. Now check this out. Here's the trip. Imagine what that felt like, walking in the house, 
knowing the man of God's there, and in that culture, they honored and respected men of God, so it was a big deal. So, 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 so when he walked in, imagine looking around thinking, what y'all doing? What's going on in here? Uh, what oh, we was meeting with the man of God well, to, to do what? Uh, you can talk to him, man. You, know, you can talk to him. Imagine what it felt like to know his own father didn't think he was good enough to even be invited. And you're real spiritual, but your neighbor has been dealing with difference that was made with them their whole life. So they don't even see what's reality. They see difference because they have the mentality of a sheep that was black. You're not hearing me. And so because they have the mentality of somebody that's been ostracized, even when they're included, they see themselves as being by themselves. Which is why it becomes so difficult for them to interact with other people because the only thing they see is through the lenses of being ostracized, criticized, and ridiculed. And so because that's all they see, even though they've been accepted, they reject because they don't want to experience the same thing that happened to them again. So their way of preventing it is to become a preemptive rejecter. So which means I'll reject you before you get a chance to do what Jesse did to me. Are you here? So imagine this. David deals with rejection. So watch this. Say he's bitten. Y'all mind me? It's okay for me to take my time to do it right here? So he's bitten. And when he gets bitten, check this out. Now he has a son. Say he has a son. He has, he has many sons. But, but, but he had this one particular son, Solomon, which the Bible calls the wi- one of the wisest men to ever live. In fact, he was the richest man to ever live until just a few years ago when Bill Gates surpassed him. But now, watch this. Here's what I need you to get. Solomon got bitten by the same thing. Because you know what David did to cope with that rejection? Is any woman he saw that he wanted, he said, bless me, God. She must be mine. I had a dream about you, girl. Girl, you must be tired. You've been running through my mind all night. (laughs) So he figured, watch this, he figured maybe another woman will feel what I never got from Jesse. It's quiet. And so maybe another woman will feel it. Then when that didn't work, I need another. That didn't work, need another. That didn't work, need another. He got a thousand. Watch this. And none of them ever filled one act of rejection from Jesse. So now David was bitten. Now watch this. The snake comes around. It bites Solomon. And so it bites Solomon. And watch that. It knows exactly where to bite him. Bishop, how do you know? Because while David had multiple wives, Solomon had 700 wives, 300 girlfriends, and then Pharaoh's daughter concubine a girlfriend so he's around the way girls he had bamboo earrings at least two so so you're like, what is that don't worry about it don't worry about it ask your neighbor after church are you hearing what i'm saying watch this the snake knew where to bite here's my question check the generations before you bishop how do i know where they're bitten just look at their fruit you'll know where they were bitten Because if it got them with that bite, it's hoping that it can bite you in the same place and it's going to work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that that takes us all the way back to that analogy I was using particularly. It knows where to bite you. All right. right. So bites can come from family. And lastly, bites can come from fathers. Fathers. The word father in its simplest form means a life giver. Now, it's estimated in America that one in three children are being raised without a father. Nearly half of those children live by half uh, below the poverty line. So if a father is absent, it's pretty obvious, abusive, in whatever form of abuse that might be, or arbitrary. And arbitrary in mathematics, it means that it's a placeholder, but it doesn't actually have any mathematical value. So if a father's absent, abusive, or arbitrary, that can be a very painful bite. Why, Bishop? Because if you did not have a life giver, come on, be a good class. It ain't even that deep. If you did not have a life giver, then now what you struggle to do is go through the motions and the progress of life. Because it's more than just conception, it is also the uh, process of construction. So watch this, watch this, a donor can uh, conceive, but watch this, a father constructs. So a father says, come here, son. I've been talking to God about you, and this is what we're going to do, and this is the direction we're going to move you in. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he grows old, he will not depart from him. But now, if you had to construct yourself, 
And I think there's a few people in here, just be honest about it. Maybe he was abusive or maybe he, be, he was absent or maybe he was arbitrary. And so you had to construct yourself, which is why you have a problem with God because he's trying to construct you, but you've never seen construction done before. And so since God is a father, be seated. Since God is a father, then he constructs. Say he constructs. But now watch this. If, 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 if he was absent, abusive, or arbitrary, and I've taught on this subject a lot before. You can go in the bookstore for some stuff. Uh, uh, if, if you've dealt with one of those issues, please understand, please understand, uh, you can lack a real love that removes fear. The Bible says perfect love casts out fear, which explains why so many people are scared of their own shadow. Because they never had the, conform the confirming voice and affirming voice of a father to say, you can do it. Do it. Do it. What if I fall? I'm with you. But what if I mess up? I'm right here. And so as your pastor tonight, I need to release it into somebody's life. Maybe nobody ever told you somebody's with you, but I'm with you. Maybe nobody ever told you they wouldn't give up on you. I won't give up on you. Maybe nobody ever told you you can do it. I got an announcement from heaven. You can. Because, 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 watch this. The Bible says, perfect love, it'll cast out fear. Phobio in the Greek, which means phobia. Which means, that explains why people operate in so much fear, and it's so difficult to operate in faith, because the, the role of the father now, absent, abusive, or arbitrary, that voice wasn't given. And so now you have to then come up with your own voice in many instances. Are you still here? Now, I know it gets quiet right through here because now we're dealing with you. We, in your, we all in your veins now. We didn't skip the surface of the bite. We all up in there. Now, watch this. Please understand. Maybe this isn't your story. Maybe your story is that you had a wonderful, awesome, godly father. We thank God and we praise the Lord for you. Amen. If that's your story, praise the Lord Jesus. But the statistics suggest that's not that way. So I got to deal with reality. Say so amen. All right, now watch this. Uh, now, the question sometimes people ask is, well, Bishop, you know, why? Why, why? Why wasn't the father there? Well, maybe I said this on part one. Maybe he was a runner. Maybe he just didn't know how to deal with responsibility. Which actually explains maybe then why, not you, you're spiritual, but somebody you know runs. You know what a runner is? Whenever something gets uncomfortable or difficult, they pack bags. It's quiet. And they don't just do it in relationships. They do it everywhere. They do it on a job. But this is just a lot of responsibility. I just don't know. What you don't know? You get that check every two weeks, don't you? So I don't understand what you don't know. It's quiet in the church. All right. All right. Maybe it's running. Okay. Now watch this. Now that might be one option. Say one, say, say one scenario. Uh, but another scenario, and uh, a more likely scenario, and then perhaps even a conglomeration of the two is that perhaps it was protection from God to keep you free from the dysfunction of your bloodline. Bishop, what do you mean protection by God? Let me, let me tell all the single ladies something who you keep bringing all these uncles around your kids. It's quiet. They had seven uncles in ten months. It's too many uncles. Some of y'all don't know nothing about that because you just tell your kids the truth. Your mama got a new man, baby. What you think? Ooh, she ratchet. You too grown for this. <laughs> now watch. Watch this. The presence of any man. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me very carefully. If you don't hear nothing else I say tonight. This is very, because I can't tell Bishop, I just, you know, we tried to make it work so that he could have his father. We tried to make it work. So he could have a, let me tell you something. Let me, let, me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. The presence of any man, watch this, watch this, shows a very poor judgment. Watch this. And belief in the future of your child when you will let any man.
If you let any man come and be around your children, what you are saying is you don't value them. And I don't think you went through all that labor and all that hell and did all of what you've done to just let anybody come up in your house and come up around your... It is not better for a man to be there if he crazy too. And by the way, while I'm on the subject, you are not the mama and the daddy. You are the mama. You bring him to church so that he can get around the men of God. So you are not both. Stop trying. And stop feeling like you got to compensate for what that joker didn't do. I just need to say that. Watch this. Watch this. They need somebody. They don't need Ike. <laughs> All right. They ain't really said nothing. Y'all, y'all, y'all get me on the plane tomorrow. Y'all get me. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Maybe it was protection from God. I, I'm gonna have to finish here in a minute. Maybe it's protection from God. Now, again, if this isn't your story, just for those who it is, just let them get this venom out right now. Because I remember saying, I don't have any, I don't know. My father was there. He did a great job. Praise God. Praise God for that. But if this, if this is not your story, don't tune me out. But just let those that this is their story, just let this venom come out. Just, just, just let us deal with it for just a moment so that they can get healed. And I'm going to come around your corner. Please understand, I'm going to visit everybody's house tonight. So I'm going to get to your house in just a moment. But until I get there, please understand the ice cream truck music is playing. We coming down. Ding, 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 ding. We, coming to your, we coming to your house. But let's let me get them their ice cream. They just trying to get them their little food, sickles and all this. Let me just get them what they, let me get them their stuff and I'll get to your house. So those are two scenarios. But then a third scenario, God understood that this was going to happen. So God created something several, several years uh, uh, <laughs> at the very beginning, you know, really. God created this concept of spiritual uh, father. And I've not talked about it a lot lately because, uh, you know, I'll just be real frank with you. When you've been bitten by those you try to help, you're just like, eh, no thanks. <laughs> well, on the words of the, mo uh, the most reverend Dr. Bright. So, you know, it's like, oh, just let him figure it out. Oh, you know, he, he's been bitten. But, but the Lord, he said, son, you, 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 you cannot not do what I sent you to do. And I said, but Lord, if one more of these bites, I'm biting back. And my fangs is long. Y'all, I, I apologize. I, some of y'all, if you're a first-time guest, I... I should have just prayed. That's what we should have did. I had no business getting up here teaching tonight. I should have just prayed. This CD is only for sale tonight. That's <laughs> now, now, watch this. Watch this. In the scripture, God created a system to be able to deal with this issue. Because God knew it was going to be a problem. In fact, can I teach you tonight? God created this system, this concept. And, and it's found in several places. But you can write this down in your own time. And just study in your own time. First Corinthians 4. Write that down. Read the whole chapter. It's also in 1 Kings 19. Read the whole chapter. It's also in 2 Kings chapter 2. Read the whole chapter. It's also in Joshua chapter 1. Read the whole chapter. All right, so if you didn't get them, get the CD. All right. <laughs> Amen. Some of y'all like, no, can, can you go back? Corinthians, you still writing Corinthians. You still on the ends. <laughs> get the CD. <laughs> it's all right, just get the CD. All right. All right, got to learn the abbreviations. First, C-O-R. See, there you go. But now, but now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So you see this throughout the Bible with guys like Joshua. Joshua's name, his, he was Joshua's son of none. None means limitations. So he's a son of limitations, and he comes around the presence of Moses, the man of God. And then one of the first things Moses does is changes his name and say, mm -mm. we are to change your name. Because your name, Joshua, means God can save. Moses, as his man of God, changes his name and says, we're going to change it so that your name means God has saved. They say, Bishop, what's the significance of the difference? Every time Mount Moses was calling his name, he was declaring something. So he now no longer becomes uh, uh, 
a man where God can save that's limited. Here it is. Go ahead and put it up. Numbers 13, 16. Watch. They're the, they're the names of the men who Moses sent out to spy the land. And Moses called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. Joshua is his Moses given name. His original name is Hoshea. Hoshea means God can do it. Joshua means God did it. So you see this concept. And so matter of fact, even when Moses dies in Joshua chapter 1, uh, you see even when Moses dies, you see this whole concept begin to play out. And the scripture calls him Moses' assistant, Moses' deacon, Moses' minister. Different versions say it different ways. You can look at guys like Elisha, 1 Kings 19. Elisha, who had a, both a natural mother and father, the man of God, Elijah, comes by him. He comes by him for a second time. And he says to him, he says, uh, let me ask you something. Uh, uh, or actually, he doesn't even ask him anything. He comes by him and he throws his mantle on him in First Kings 19. Don't put the scriptures up because I'll feel, I'll feel led to exegete it, and I don't want to do that. I've got to move on. Um, so just trust me. It's there, and go read in your own time. Throws his mantle on him, and Elijah, Elisha, if I say S, yes. and then there was Elijah, who's the man of God. If I say J. Yes. Now, S was very, watch this, because I'm, I'm going to chip somebody tonight. S was content on being an ox herder the rest of his life. He was content. Now, but you said, Bishop, what's the significance of that? Just so you understand, ox herders, we wouldn't have read about them in the Bible. That was of no significance. But God had looked at Elisha. He looked at S and thought that there was something great about him. So as a compliment to S, he sent him a J. What God thinks about you is reflected in the man of God he gives you. Nah. I'll leave that alone. I'll leave that alone. I'll leave that alone. That's your Bible. I ain't being arrogant or pretentious. That's your Bible. That's your Bible. And so Elijah comes by him. I feel like preaching tonight. Elijah comes by him and he says, come on, boy, follow me. We're getting ready to change the world. I know you were happy being a nobody, going nowhere, doing nothing. But God told me to come get you because I'm taking you with me and we're about to change the world. And you know what S says to Jay? S says, let me go kiss my mother and father goodbye. And watch what Jay says again, which tells us that this was his second chance at this opportunity. And he couldn't mess this one up because watch this. Jay said, boy, I'll find somebody else. He says, again, what have I done to you? He said, you don't get to go back to do that. And you know why he wouldn't let him go back? Watch this. I'm back to this family bite. Because his mother and father, the first opportunity he had, they bit him. And they told him, well, son, everybody's always been an ox herder in our bloodline. Everybody's always been messed up in our bloodline. Everybody's always been, what you doing going down to that church thinking you're going to be somebody, thinking you're going to go somewhere. You're always at that church. What you doing? But what they don't understand is something on the inside is waking up on the inside of you and you can't ex So they bit him the first time. So this time, Elijah said, you can't go see him. Because they're going to bite you again and they're going to talk you out of what I'm doing in your life. Because they're going to, are you sure you're ready for that? Are you sure you can do that? Are you sure you can handle that? Well, you remember what happened with this. I, I got to move on. And then Timothy. You can read about Timothy. Paul says he had no other sons like him. Titus. You can read about Titus. Paul said he had no, uh, he really enjoyed Titus. They were men of honor. And watch this. When a father is absent, abusive, or arbitrary. Say if a, if a father is absent, abusive, or arbitrary. There may be some things missing. So, so we talked about a real love that removes fear. We talked about a reason to live. Please understand, uh, that's the power of you, of you being connected to church. So for those of you that maybe if you've been for, away from church for a while, I want to encourage you. This is your moment. This is your time, sir. This is your time, ma'am. This is your time to really connect with God. You're not here on coincidence. And by the way, you didn't pick Harvest. God picked Harvest and you and us together. He said that this union has got to happen. Be because, God, because, because watch this, you were born for a reason. Say, I was born for a reason. No, you don't say it like you mean it. Say, I was born for a reason. And it's more than just paying bills. It's more than just drama. It's more than just making babies. It's more than just waking up, going to work, coming home, eating some dinner, going to bed. You were born to be a world changer and a history maker. But if you never had your daddy tell you that, you'll spend your, what am I supposed to do? I'm going to try this on Monday. I'm going to try this next year. 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 Then you may also be missing a responsibility to do better. Uh, please understand. Question, who holds you accountable? 
Yeah, if, for those of you who, who grew up in two-parent homes, um, mothers had this trick. Y'all remember it? I'm going to tell you, and it's soon, yo. Now, she said clean the house four times. She used that threat once. That house was spick and span. Usually in cleaning products, didn't even know. I think I'm going to put some pine salt over on the blinds. Put some pine salt on the blinds. <laughs> All right, here's the point. Here's the point. Some people don't ever realize their potential because if a father is absent, abusive, or arbitrary, he never actually speaks it to them. So how do you know you have potential if nobody's ever declared it to you? Which is why you get people who, who get real arrogant and get real prideful. Pride is a sign of an unchecked ego. But why is there an unchecked ego? Because there was never any father to say, check it. Brush all that off. It's quiet up in here. It's so all that ego and all of that, brah, 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 I'm somebody, you're going to see me. That comes because no father ever said, mm -mm. I love you, and you got 10 seconds to stop all of that. <laughs> fix your face. So tonight, if you ain't never been told to fix your face, as your pastor, fix your face. All that extra you be walking up to your job with and walking up to church with, mm -mm. you got 10 seconds. Won't he do it? <laughs> now, from one bite, the second point, there are many toxins, all right? I got, I got, y'all give me 10 more minutes? Yeah, okay. I didn't hear everybody say that. Some of you are like, I, I got to go eat. Can I tell you something? You wouldn't hurt skipping dinner tonight. You just wouldn't hurt. In fact, you probably need to fast. You probably just need to just, just fast from here until the end of the year. Just fast. I'm hungry. God, dog, you had seven sandwiches today, four bags of chips, two burritos, two donuts that you wasn't expecting them to bring in. I mean, what else you need? God, dog. All right, okay. from, one, from one bite, there are many toxins. And I gave you these, and, and I, want, I want to spend some time here. Uh, the, the first toxin, do you remember what it was? Involuntary muscle contraction. It is spelled F A S C I C U L I N S. Now, I said it the southern version when I was teaching it, <laughs> so I moved on from it real fast. I like the Facilians. <laughs> Amen. Now, it, now, here's what it does it causes involuntary muscle contraction. Watch this. If you've been making real stupid, involuntary decisions, like, why did I do that? It might be a sign you've been bitten and didn't know it. I like watching this show. There's this show called uh, uh, Monsters Inside Me, and it's about, uh, it's about parasites and stuff like that. I like stuff like that. I'm like, wow, look at that. And then that's, you know, that's why I'm extra, I like to be extra clean with stuff. I got sanitizer with me everywhere, and just, you know, just in case it's, you know, some uh, hookworm got up on the cup or something. I don't know. Probably can't even live on the cup, but just in case it morphed or something. I just <laughs> don't judge me. Do not look at me with that tone of voice. So, so, so watch this. It's involuntary muscle contraction, which it means it, it explains stupid decisions that we make. Watch this. Some of the relationships you get in are toxin. You're hurting, so you think to get over it, you need to get somebody else. And you'll even say stuff that the Bible doesn't say, but the quickest way to get over them is to get somebody new. And that's not scripture. In fact, okay, since y'all ain't saying amen, I'm going to dig. I don't know how far I'll get. Maybe I have to give you like eight parts of this, but watch this. But I got to move on. We can start a new series Sunday, so we got, we got to get it done tonight. I'm, uh, we got to get it done tonight. H here's the deal. Um, please a lot of relationships are born out of need. And that's a bad place for a relationship to start. You needed somebody to pay half the bills. <laughs> Let me talk over here. Y'all... This, I mean, it's like the doggone, I'll go get my robes and stuff. I didn't know that's the way it was. Okay? You needed to, see, it started out as you having somebody to just go do stuff with. And then it turned into, well, ain't nobody else trying to do nothing, so I just, just seemed like this. Can't really stand them, but you know, ain't nobody perfect. Watch this, and then you'll justify it, because I got my own issues, too. All right, 
Stupid decisions, involuntary muscle contractions, purchases. Sometimes you get over toxin, you'll go buy yourself something to feel good. Some of y'all still paying stuff off from when you were bidden in 89. Because you put it on that credit card, you put it on that Providian. You remember Providian? And then you didn't, come on, don't look at me like that. Come on, be honest with me. And now you transferred it, transferred it, transferred it, transferred it, transferred it. You didn't pay $4,000 for that $150 purse. <laughs> you got some Jordans, but you got the old school Jordans and you still paying them better. Ain't even had them for years. So, so, so one of this, uh, one of these other ones, uh, okay, could be staying in a bad situation, whatever that situation is, because it's an involuntary muscle contraction. So, because you don't know what to do, you figure I'll just do nothing. All right. Then it could be leaving a good situation. Then it could be outbursts. Okay, where you know you just explode and everybody's like, "What happened to you?" You ever seen somebody do that where they got totally out of character and you're like, to the point to where it makes you, it makes you then doubt and question everything that's ever happened with them because you're like I just did you know my God God dog right but then the second toxin was the dendrotoxin which causes paralysis now those dendrotoxins watch this uh, it, you can get stuck where you're bitten and you can get stuck when you're bitten and you can even get stuck with who bit you so you can get stuck where you're bitten. What do you mean, Bishop? Where you're at in life. Which is why some people are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, but they think like they're in their 20s. Okay, okay. So I ain't going to say nothing. Listen. Uh, okay. Play something right there, because I have to play something right there. Just do something. Just, uh, hey, man, lift your hands. Play something real meditational. Okay, what's it? Because what's this? You should be a classy lady if you in your all the time, but especially in your 40s and 50s and 60s, you should not be looking like you finna go hit the club and you got great grandkids. Okay. Mm. Now you should never look like that because you're a woman that represents Jesus. Fellas, you are two, you're 55. Your pants shouldn't be all on the ground. Your pants on the ground. Pants on the ground. Now they should never be that way. But especially. So, so you, you can get stuck where you were bitten. You can get stuck when you were bitten. So watch this. You ever met somebody who when you talk to them, everything they talk about is about that situation that hurt him? Like, hey, how you doing? You know what? When daddy did that back to me in 88. Look. <laughs> Man, you need to come on. And then watch this. You, you can even get stuck with who bit you. This is why, watch this, and, and I'm talking a lot about relationships because those, we can see it that way, so don't, don't take that to mean anything other than I'm using examples, and when the shoe fits, put that thing on. Um, you can even be stuck with who bit you. That, that's why an abused uh, person will keep going back to that abuser. Okay, that's why an, ab an abuse. Watch this, because now it's not just men abusing women now. <laughs> Anna May came up out that recording booth. You understand me? It's a whole new day. Anna May like, no, you ain't finna hit me no more. I, I, uh. Oh, you what you finna do? <laughs> you better go fix that car. Let me get up from my nap and that car not be fixed. And then I'm going to go to the mall. And you better have some money on the table. <laughs> but it explains why the, 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 uh, the, <laughs> the one being abused would, would continue to stay with the abuser. Because it's paralysis. <laughs> stuck. Stuck. If you feel stuck in life, maybe you were bitten and didn't know it. And, and the reason I brought up that show about parasites is because sometimes people can have the parasite and they didn't know that they had it until damage was done. So, so the reason this is such an important message and such an important teaching and the reason I want to come back around again to it is, is because I need you to, 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 to be good because for what God's getting ready to do in your life, scratch that, what God is doing in your life, 
You don't have time to be messing with that snake and messing with that venom. Then there are the cardiotoxins, which are toxic to the heart. Heart in Hebrew and Greek, Old Testament and New Testament, it means mind, the seat of your decision making. So now your mind gets messed up. You ever, you ever sat back and looked at yourself thinking? Like, no, seriously, have you ever, you've been thinking and then you kind of like have an out of body experience? Not literally. If you did, you need to see somebody. But like over here, and you're like, what are you doing? So what should be cut and dry, A, B, black, white, up, down, is all shades of gray. It's all messed up. It's all confusing. And you're like, I don't know why, why is this so hard? It could be because that cardiotoxin has messed up your mind. So what, so you sitting here arguing with what the word says because your cardiotoxins have got you now well I don't know well what you don't know and people tell me I just don't know well, what, what, t tell me what it is that you don't know well I, I, I don't know but the, if you don't know what you don't know well, then I'm trying to figure out how you know you didn't know it Then the hemotoxins destroy your red blood cells. Please, please understand, uh, blood, the Bible says that blood represents life. So hem hemotoxins mess with your blood, of, uh, with the flow of your life. And I taught you this in part one. Uh, Jesus said, I'm coming that you might have. And how? You got it. All right, watch this. Well, that word in the Greek is zoe for your New Testament. And watch this. It has several definitions, but one of the definitions means vitality. And vitality is not life itself. It's the capacity to live, which just means your power to endure. Let me say it another way. It's your power to fight. Have, have, you, have you ever, just let's be honest tonight, have you ever got to a place in life to where you're like, I just don't even want to fight no more. I don't care. To, to, and I'm not talking about fighting about stuff you should not fight about. I'm talking about fighting about stuff you should fight about. To where you just don't even care. You get up in the morning, I don't even care. You go to work, got it, just laissez faire, just, you know, whatever. All right, so please understand, please understand. So when you're bitten, one of the venoms that's introduced is designed to make you lose your fight. Because what, what your neighbor thought, Jesus giving me abundant life means is that Jesus is going to take away every obstacle. No. In fact, the scripture says, listen to this, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now listen, now we hear that and we're like, hey amen, the joy of the Lord is my strength. What you don't understand is what gives him joy is seeing you develop into a stronger fighter. You understand what I just said? And the joy of the Lord is my strength. It did not say you being joyful is your strength. It does not say anything like that. It says what makes him happy is what ends up making you strong. Well, ma what, what makes you strong is when you have resistance. So he gets happy while you're sitting there going through resistance. And he's like, come on, son. Come on, son. Come on, son. Come on, daughter. Come on, daughter. I know you can do it. I'm getting happy now because you're getting stronger. I know it hurt when they bit you, but you're getting better. I know it hurt when that happened, but you're getting better. His joy comes from what makes us strong. Are you here? No, 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 watch this. Watch this. So, 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 then, so then abundant life then and being epic is wrapped in a bite. So if you've had a bite over the last 12 months, that was God's way of letting you know I'm, I'm taking you to epic. One of y'all, two of y'all, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to confuse what you, I want you to confuse your, your, your drama, your, your stress, your stress. I want you to confuse that. You ready? Here's what I want you to do. Shout, thank God for my bite. Watch this, watch this. Now, then the next thing, I got to move, is a neurotoxin. Neurotoxins make you feel numb. Now, I taught you this, and I need you to understand this. Here's what a neurotoxin does. A neurotoxin, it's a good pretender. It mimics something that's legitimately missing in your life. Literally, in uh, the biological study and physiological study of it, a neurotoxin, what it does is it mimics a molecule that's actually legitimately missing in, 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 in a particular uh, construction of a cell or what have you. What it does is the neurotoxin, when it's introduced, it mimics this particular chemical called ACH in this particular, uh, 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 in, your, in our bodies. What it does is it looks like the real thing. I'll help somebody. Talks like the real thing. 
acts like the real thing, says all the right things, seems to remove the pain. Y'all not going to say nothing to me. Seems to take away uh, the issue, seems to take away the problem, seems to, when that neurotoxin is present, it, it makes you unaware of what's really going on. And ACH is a neurotransmitter to the brain. So it fakes like it's ACH, and then watch what it does. It goes and it locks into the cell. So then watch this. Your cell thinks, I've got what I need now. But what it does is blocks the transmission from reality to your brain. That's why, watch this, leprosy was, watch this. In the scripture, somebody could have cut themselves, and what would happen with leprosy is they didn't know that they had been cut. And since they didn't know that they had been cut, what would happen is that it, the cut would get infected. Watch this, because there was never a transmission from the cut. So if somebody, you know, bumped up or something and they got cut. Because they didn't know they'd been cut, if the cut was now infected, what happens next, watch this, is that that infection spreads. But the issue is they could have caught it when they were first cut, but because the transmission didn't go from the source of the pain to their brain. You didn't hear me. So what a, what a neurotoxin does is you've been bitten and you think, well, anything to get rid of this pain. The problem is that anything isn't the thing. So, so watch this. Watch this. So, so, so essentially you get disconnected from reality. You get disconnected from you. Which is why certain people can do very cruel things to other people. And you're like, you don't even have no kind of regard for what you did. They don't. You know why? Because there's a neurotransmitter there that's being blocked. Because they're in pain. So you know what people in pain do? Inflict it. You know what people that are hurting do? Hurt. Do, do you follow what I'm saying? All right, all right, all right. So, so I gave you some examples. Uh, it's any, a neurotoxin is everything you use to keep from dealing with the reality of your situation. It could be gossip. And I'm just giving you different examples. It could be food. All right, see, if you just say, man, I could move on. It could be food, it could be drugs. Drogas, I believe, in Espanol, I think. You ain't got to that lesson, but I was peeking ahead in my notes. <laughs> Spanish teacher. All right, it, it could be sex. It could be pornography. It could be, it could be uh, watch this, denial. Where you just deny what is blatantly true and obvious. Like somebody says, you got a red shirt on? No. This shirt is not red. It's not red. It's a light ox blood. <laughs> okay. You, you, ever, you ever try to talk to somebody who's just clearly in denial and they just won't believe reality? I, I, I'm almost done. But my, my point is, is this. Uh, now, you say, Bishop, well, then how do, I, how do I juxtapose that and reconcile that? Well, I'm supposed to call things to be not as though they were, and I'm supposed to have a good report in my mouth. Our faith isn't a denial of reality. It is just simply us realizing that God is greater than our reality. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not denying what's right there. It's just realizing that, well, it may be there. If God be for me. It magnifies God better than, bigger than your situation. That's why the psalmist said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Well, how do I magnify God? He can't get any bigger than he already is. But it's that he's bigger than me. And when you see him as bigger than that debt, then that debt goes. When you see him as bigger than that dysfunction in your family, then it goes. When you see him as bigger than those generational curses you're plowing through, then they go. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Now, that third point I gave you, and this, and, this, and I'm through it because of my time, is, is the bite is an expedited blessing. You remember that? And we talked about how it's a footstool, and a footstool is a shortcut. And here's what I need you to see. And the last thing, is, uh, the last verse of Acts 28 and 5, not the last verse, but Acts 28 and 5, it said, and Paul shook off the creature into the fire. Everybody say the fire. fire. Say it again. Say the fire. the fire. Which that word fire literally means to endure the process which transforms. Now, your neighbor, touch him, say he's talking about you, is in a process called peer in the Greek. 
It is a process that is transforming them. And what your neighbor has to make sure they don't do is deduce that letting the snake continue to stay there is better than shaking it off into the fire. Bishop, what do you mean? Because Paul could have said, well, I guess this is just how it's going to be. I guess I'm just going out. I guess this is just the end. Paul could have said, you know what? It's going to hurt too much because watch this. For me to shake him means his fangs have to start rattling, which means I'm going to be in pain some more. And the process, it was painful to get bitten. And now you're telling me I got to go through a process that may inflict some additional pain because pain is simply discomfort. You're telling me I got to remain uncomfortable and experience discomfort. That's exactly what I'm telling you because you're on a process that is making you better. You're on a process that's making you wiser. You're on a process that's making you smart. Baby, you ain't even the same you were when you first got bitten. You've been growing. Somebody shout, I've been growing. You've been getting stronger. You've been gaining strength. You've been gaining wisdom. You pray now like you've never prayed before. You come to church now like you never came to church before. It was good that you were bitten because you are in a process. Somebody shout process. Endure the process which transforms. So you're in a process that transforms. Now, your neighbor's process is different than your process. Whether you were bitten by somebody you trusted, whether it came from somewhere you didn't expect it, uh, whether it came from, you know, a father, whether it came from uh, a friend, whatever, you're in a process. Say, I'm in a process. Now, here's what I've seen people do, and, and I want to encourage you to not do, is that when the process gets a little rough, they just look at the snake and say, just stay there. I, I just, it's just easy to be mad about it. You, okay, watch this. I'm, 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 I'm helping. I'm through. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to close. <laughs> I said, I'm getting ready to close. <laughs> Here's the deal. Uh, you, you, you ever been like, I need to get over there. And then something was like, uh-uh. But remember that other thing they said? And you were like, I'm finna be healed. I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Then all of a sudden, five of y'all know? And you, 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 uh, you, you, you're like, I should do this. Let me give you another example, because I just need to, I got five minutes on the CD. We ain't doing the second one. That's not good English. We are not producing a second compact disc. Um, you, you, you ever, let me just use working out for an example. You ever knew you need to go to the gym? Set your gym clothes out? Come on, church. And then you were like, I'm going to look good at the gym. Iron them bad boys. Your T-shirt was creased. You understand? <laughs> Say, I'm, I'm, I need to go to the gym. And the alarm clock went off on time. <laughs> wasn't raining that morning. Wasn't snowing. Weather was good. But then all of a sudden, you get up. You're like, oh, this is the day the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be made glad. In. So I was supposed to go to the gym. <laughs> but you know what? I forgot. I forgot. I got that meeting today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do it tonight. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it tonight. No, because then, then, I'm going to do it tonight because I know, I, you know, I better do it like that. Cause then, and then, you know what? I get energy when I work out, so that will be good for me anyhow because I can go get that energy. No, no, I need to do that. I need more water. See, I need some more water too. So I don't want to do it this early because I may not get in. The traffic might be bad too. So, you know, this is smart the way I'm doing this. This is smart. Ooh, thank God for wisdom. I shout out to our Mr. Bishop, Mr. Bishop. To only know you were really, really, really talking yourself. You knew you weren't going. You talked yourself up out of it. You're not hearing what I'm saying. And what? watch this. What, I need to tell you because the source of what's trying to talk you out of your process ain't God. 
Though we walk through the valley, which means God says, don't try to run from it. Don't try to avoid it. Baby, just keep on walking through it. Whatever process you got to walk through, walk through it. If you got to walk through it by yourself, walk through it by yourself. Because if I go through this process, I'm coming out like pure gold. And whatever the process is, that's different for everybody. But don't talk yourself out of it. If it's too hard, I'm not going to do it. I should say that they hurt me, but you know, I'm not doing it. They should know. Let me help you with your passive aggressive self. Maybe they don't know. They process. Anybody here in a process right now? Anybody wanted to look at the process and say, to Gehenna with you? <laughs> Gehenna is a Greek word for hell, which means hot trash. To the trash with you. And not just the regular trash, <laughs> but the hot trash. <laughs> the trash bin where they heat it up. The one located just outside of Jerusalem. All right, so here's the deal. Here's, here's, here's the word, and, and I left you here, and I need you to get this from part one, and I, I need to reiterate this point right here. Say process. process. There's some stuff that truth be told would have been just easier if God had just did it. Amen. Anybody got some stuff where you, you asked, like, Lord, do it? And you felt like you had the victory, too. You're like, oh, I got that thing tonight. And, Whoa, won't he do it? Yes, you will. I know. I got that thing. And then, and then you say, by this time tomorrow, and then this time tomorrow came and went. <laughs> And you're like, well, maybe my prayer, maybe didn't get up there. Something happened. <laughs> Interference. The snow interfered. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. There's some stuff God says, I'll, got, I'll do that and I'll do that quick. There's some stuff where God leaves the obstacle in the middle of the road. And he says, I just wanted to see if, if, if you was going to turn around. Or if you're going to get out the car and figure out how to get over this thing. So I'm done. I got one last assignment to do tonight. I'm closing the book. The only thing I need to get you to do is get back in the car. And realize you got to keep on pushing through whatever process you're in. I know it's a boulder in the middle of the road, but baby, he has not brought you this far to leave you. He didn't bring you this far. You ain't finna go out like this. You're not dying like this. You're not gonna be broke the rest of your life. You're not gonna have jacked up relationships to run. Baby, get back in that car and figure out how to get around that thing because if God left that boulder in the middle of the road, that means he expects you to figure out how to go through it. And tonight, I'm done, but I just need tonight. Come on, let's be a good class. Paul shook that thing off in the fire. Paul said, you won't steal my passion just because I got a process. You won't steal my praise just because I got a process. You won't steal my worship just because I'm in pro I wish I had about 100 folk in here tonight that says, Satan, you won't win just because I'm in the middle of a process. I need you to just bless him right here. I said I need you to bless him. That's the best you got? That's the best you got? You better shake that thing off into the fire. Shake that thing off into the fire. Shake that thing. Shake that. Shake that. Shake that thing off and Don't make no sense why you're praising it, but you're like Paul. You just got the worst piece of mail you've ever received, but the first of the month's coming up and you're trying to calculate it now, but just 
Somebody's going to get it tonight. 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 You're trying to figure out how this is going to work, how that going to But just, I just need some radical people that don't mind getting up out of their seating area and just start shaking it, baby. Shake that depression off. Shake that defeat. I, I need somebody. I just need you to start shaking that I Somebody shout, I'm shaking it off. Say it until your great, 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 I will not be discouraged. I will not walk around with my head down. No. Make them mad that they mess with you in the first place. Make them mad that they lied on you in the first place. Make them mad. Say you mess with the wrong one, sucker. Everybody, everybody standing, everybody standing, everybody standing. I, uh, <laughs> whatever process you're in, but if the obstacle's still there, <laughs> I said, if the obstacle's still there, beat it. If he didn't remove it, and you asked him to, and it's still there, Beat it. You didn't hear me. <laughs> if you asked him to fix it and he didn't, then just beat it. If you still ain't got the call back for the job, just beat it. Bishop, what do you mean? Get even more violent and relentless? They say, oh, no, I will not be defeated like this. Sometimes to find gold, you got to dig deep. 